Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. Story number one. Bubble, written by Alex underscore 146. When humanity, he joined the ranks of the galactic community. No one thought much of them. They lacked the wisdom of the multi-eon euctids or the particle weapons of the constantly warring chonfits. They neither possessed the body strength of the Crevens nor the agility of the Scritats. To all outside observers, humanity was unremarkably average. They did good deeds, fought a few walls, expanded their territory, but humanity had always blended into the background of history. Their species, yet another footnote in the prosperous galactic community. That was until the Okrul arrived. They greeted our delegations warmly, they signed treaties, and soon they joined the galactic community as another member species. Though, through all the drinking, all the celebrations, all the handshakes and broadcasts, Humanity watched from afar, silently, calculating. Very soon, all cruel companies set up branches on different planets. Their manufacturing process could be claimed by some to be the greatest in the known galaxy. All cruel products were delivered cheaper and at higher quality than that of any species could hope to compete with. The economic benefits brought by the process were revolutionary and multiplied galactic GDP tenfold. Though... Curiously, the old cool never shared the process with anyone. The ambassador was welcoming, and his smile never wavered when asked this question, though he never responded to it either. Yet still, humanity watched. The next few weeks saw a cruel company shares double, then triple, then increased by 1500%. Stockbrokers were rolling in credits, and some even prophesied that a new golden age could soon arrive. Dividends continued to climb, and stock purchases never dropped. All cruel companies grew more prominent, and yet more companies were founded. Researchers used the stock prices to fund research. And very soon, 99% of all citizens owned technologies thought as premium, top-of-the-class products a mere year ago. Then it happened. Some may say that it was investors snapping awake and noticing the reality of the fact that the stocks aren't going to rise forever. Others may speculate that some mega corporations back at the Orkul's home planet fecked up massively. But on a sunny afternoon, all the stock exchange servers in the galaxy were suddenly overloaded with sell requests. Stocks dropped by the hundreds, and by the end of the day, anyone who didn't react fast enough lost everything. Many drove themselves to suicide, while others lived the rest of their lives on the streets. Protests and riots broke out in major cities. Martial law was declared universally, and millennia-old nations crumbled under the impossible weight of the economic collapse. While the Orkuls continued to profit, slowly controlling the entire galaxy from the shadows, at least that was what would have happened. While empires and states were drunk off the impossibly high economic growth, humanity watched from afar, cooperating with their corporations into forming a plan. Human investment firms purchased all cool stocks by the billions in secret. It was later revealed that the public owned only around 1% of the all cool public shares, while human megacorporations and the human government solely owned the others. So, as the stocks continued to rise uncontrollably, humanity lurked in the shadows. They quietly tipped off investors about the possibility of a crash one by one, slowly deflating the stock prices just enough so that when the worst came, the damage won't be disastrous. They hired staff members from other species to get as much stock under human control as possible. Eventually, all cool stocks started to slide. But there was no rush, no panics, no riots, no suicides. Although all cool companies' stocks dropped, trading continued as usual. Investors watched from afar, wondered where all the stockholders went. The days of waiting turned to months. The O'Call Company Index dropped by hundreds of percent, though no one rushed to sell. Back on O'Cruel's home planet, company heads and leaders were in panic. 
Their perfect plans for galactic domination failed for no apparent reason. They thought that they were so original in their plans, so unique. They were mistaken. When the human delegation accused the Orkrul government of stock manipulation and had evidence dating from before first contact with the wider community, they had no choice but to confess. When human megacorporations bought Orkrul production sectors and released their trade secrets to the galaxy, the Orkrul representative could only watch in guilt. So, how did humanity, a race so insignificantly average in their accomplishments in the galactic community, see what others could not? Many asked this question, and humanity was happy to answer. Through the years uh, that we, as a species, are a member of the galactic community, we were happy to grease the wheels to let others claim the fame, glory, and honor. A human delegate explained, However, by not reaching for the center stage and by staying in the shadows, many overlooked us. They thought of us as just another species in the galactic community. The Okrul did the same, and that is understandable. It is equally as understandable that the Okruls would try this trick, for we have done it many times before. They called the phenomenon an economic bubble. It's an interesting name, though it perfectly describes the event. They explained that before they discovered interstellar travel, they had companies valued so high that these companies could easily put any mega corporations to shame. They told how at the time there were companies with no form of income, yet it had stock value higher than the rest of the market combined. They explained how a flower was able to be worth more than an entire house. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it, they said. We protected our past so we can safeguard the future. And I believe that every one of you should do. A crisis averted, or a simple overreaction. Perhaps in another timeline, the crash would never have happened. However, would the chance that this rise in stock just might bring around another golden age outweigh the possibility of a crash? We will never know. But maybe it is better to keep it that way. End of story. Story number two. Forbidden Knowledge, written by Rhino Bird. I'm not crazy. You ever read those stories about the guy who read some book of arcane knowledge and goes mad? Uh, the guy who sees some nameless cosmic horror and it melts his brain? I uh, think I, I, I know what that's like. About a year ago, I saw a UFO. I'm not crazy. I'm not one of those UFO conspiracy nuts. I was just driving home one night and saw this thing in the sky. Classic flying saucer shape, like you see in the movies. I'll read about. I wish to say that I had the presence of mind to take a picture, but uh, I didn't. I was driving and was barely able to pull over without crashing. It disappeared before I realized that I had my phone in my pocket. After I got home, I told my wife what I saw. She seemed skeptical, but said she believed me. Our parents were the same. They said they believed me, but I could see the doubt under the surface. There was nothing to do about it. It was just something I saw one day. Still, um, I started reading about UFOs on the internet. Wow, there are some real head cases out there, but uh, some of it formed a consistent narrative. It uh, intrigued me enough to want to go check out a UFO convention in town. It was about what you would expect, crazies and gawkers, cheap tchotchkes, overpriced drinks at the bar. I started asking the people if they'd seen anything. Most hadn't. Some had. The more witnesses I talked to, the easier it became to tell the crazies from the genuine article. I could see the look in their eyes, like they wanted someone to believe them. I'd seen, but I doubted them. In the real cases, there were pieces that fit together if I ignored their speculations and focused on what they saw. They were different craft. I could tell who had seen what I saw. I could tell who had seen something else. I could tell who had was mistaken airplanes or rocket launchers for something otherworldly. I dove deeper into the reports on the internet. It was all fascinating. There is a lot of UFO law before I considered all bunk. Now, I find bits and pieces that fit with normality unerringly well. 
Like that guy in the 80s who said he worked in Area 51. He said the saucer he worked on was powered by Element 115. It didn't exist. Then they made a few atoms on an isotope in a lab. Uh, he said gravity and the strong nuclear forces were the same thing. Somehow. Then I stumbled on articles talking about double gluons matching that we expect gravitons to look like. The strong force and gravity are two sides of the same force, like electricity and magnetism. Intriguing. More pieces put together. It's hard not to speculate, to draw conclusions, but there it is. The reports, the mad conspiracies aren't that mad. I can see the dark shapes swimming just underneath the surface of our world, fighting each other, feeding. There'll be an occasional news report of something that is of great importance. It should be on the front page. It will appear buried on page six. Barely a paragraph. And never mentioned again, like an alligator surfacing, then dipping below the surface, leaving no ripples. I tried to warn my family of the dangers. They didn't believe me. They didn't understand. My wife left. She said she didn't know who I was anymore. I can't ignore what I know. That's the danger of forbidden knowledge. It doesn't drive you insane. It changes your perspective. The world you knew is broken in your mind, like an optical illusion. The skewed perspective now lets you see things that were hidden. New changes, new visitors, it can't be unseen. As you try to tell your loved ones what is there, your words fail. There are no words, they can't understand. Everything out of your mouth sounds like a fevered dream or a drug trip. It leaves you raving like a madman. I go to the UFO conventions. I try to warn others. They don't listen. There are no crazies anymore. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.